So we're ready for, uh, so everyone knows, uh, uh, Rich Thomas, he is the <clears throat> creative director for Onyx Path Publishing slash White Wolf, and he's a guest of honor at Gen Con this year, so that apparently means I'm going to be packed in every conceivable panel possible simultaneously. So he, and his panels are, like, at the other end of the convention center. <laughs> so he's running from that panel to here, which is, of course, at the back at hospital end of the hotel, sort of being in the basement. And so he's trying to make his way here. But uh, I will go ahead and start. I am uh, Eddie Webb. I'm currently a uh, content designer for CCP on the World Darkness MMO. But uh, I previously, uh, I was one of the early developers for Werewolf Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition uh, before uh, I had my job changed. And so uh, I worked with um, Rich Thomas... Uh, Ethan Skemp and Bill Bridges to work on the original outline for World 20th. And uh, part of that was because I was originally the lead developer on Vampire 20th, and so it was uh, Rich and the crew really wanted me to be involved with that to bring what I learned during the, the Vampire 20th experience and how we would apply that to Apocalypse. Uh, and when I started this, certainly I had been uh, a fan of Apocalypse. I, 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 my bread and butter has always been uh, Vampire, especially because that's what I do in my day job now. Uh, but Apocalypse certainly was a, a pretty close second. Uh, I, I ran uh, Wild West for a, a while back in uh, Cincinnati when I lived there. Um, and I played in a couple of uh, Apocalypse LARPs. So, I mean, I was certainly uh, familiar and, and really enjoyed the material. But one of the things that I was pretty adamant about when I first started working on the outlines with uh, Ethan and Bill was that I did not want whatever worked for Vampire to necessarily be the default for Werewolf. Uh, Werewolf is its own unique game, even though they share a world of darkness. It, it is its own idea, it has its own things that are awesome about it, and those are not necessarily the same things that are awesome and great about Vampire. So... Uh, while we certainly learned a lot from the Vampire 20th experience when we started working on Werewolf 20th, uh, I, I immediately went back to re-examining core assumptions. It's like, is this actually the best thing for Werewolf? Uh, and which led to some interesting discussions because pretty early on, we agreed that we weren't going to worry about like compatibility with Vampire. Uh, the classic World of Darkness has notoriously been difficult to find compatibility between the game lines. And uh, there was potentially an opportunity to have a kind of 20th anniversary edition core rule set, if you will. Uh, Dark, Line, Dark Ages kind of did an early stages of this, where having Dark Ages Vampire and then the other Dark Ages games requiring Dark Ages Vampire's basis. Uh, I felt that that was a disservice to Werewolf to do that. Uh, because uh, the things we, we made Vampire 20th in a vacuum. We genuinely thought we were going to do Vampire 20th Anniversary Edition, and that was going to be awesome. And then we're going to go back to doing other things. And we did Vampire 20th Anniversary Edition and got a huge response. I mean, we expected a certain amount of response, more than distributors told us we would get. Uh, but we certainly got, even beyond our wildest expectations, uh, the response, and not just for explicitly vampire, but the classic world of darkness. And so when we start talking about, uh, literally we were preparing for Gen Con last year, uh, and we got the go ahead to do Werewolf 20th, but like, we stuck the slide into the presentation right before we got on the plane, and we started, we officially announced it here last year. Uh, it was, already I was going, th we really should be thinking about each game in isolation, uh, because we're trying to bring a classic experience for each of these games, and not only have they previously been kind of in isolation, but also uh, we shouldn't be beholden to old assumptions. So uh, we, we talked about things like, okay, the skill set can switch around if necessary because they shouldn't be the exact same skills that Vampire worked on. Uh, I will pause. This is Rich Thomas, as I mentioned previously. Hi, guys. I'm um, late again. I, I, I told everybody that you're part robot and that you're going to destroy them all. Because I have metal hands and robots are really strong. It's true. Where are your metal hands? You left them. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, I was just kind of talking about the context of... Um, I don't know why it's working now. I didn't work for the mummy panel. I think my it's iPad mummy's a Colin. curse. Mummy's <laughs> mummy's mummy's Colin's curse for my iPad. Um, but I was just kind of talking about the, the context about when we first announced World 20 and the idea that it, it, I was very strong about it needs to be in isolation and it needs to be yep. what's best for that game. Yeah, well, I mean, in the same sense, you know, the Vampire 20 was a distillation of... 
all the various um, versions of Masquerade, uh, Apocalypse has to do the same thing. And Apocalypse and Masquerade were not created in any way which would say that they absolutely had to mesh and work together mm -hmm. on almost any level. Uh, because we were making the next new game. It was like, woo, we're trying new things. And that was what that I think is one of the things, the energy you can bring to these anniversary editions, which is not just to for reprint, not just to redo it again, but really thinking what was really cool about that thing. And if you're desperately trying to lock it into what we do with V20, then mm -hmm. you're not you're doing a disservice to Werewolf. And so one of the first things uh, I did was uh, I, I kind of, uh, at this time, uh, Ethan and Bill were both in the same office as me, so it was very convenient, and I was able to pick their brains, and we would say, I want you guys to give me a bullet point list of what you think is cool about Apocalypse. Uh, because uh, Bill started off as a line developer, Ethan took over, and, and certainly they both brought a very uh, distinct perspective to the Apocalypse line. And so they're both... Uh, equally valid, but they're 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 each unique. And so uh, Bill brought up a lot of points about the um, uh, the the mysticism of the the guru. Well, he would, wouldn't he? Right, yeah, because because Bill Bridges is is known for for really liking That's the shamanic being a shaman himself, um, and, and really uh, uh, diving into um, the 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 culture of the characters and how strong that is. Uh, and Ethan brought up uh, uh, similar points, but also you know he wanted to get into uh, the Politics that are not remotely the same as vampire politics, but are still distinct in there, mm -hmm. uh, as well as just a certain visceral joy of kicking ass to a heavy metal soundtrack. Uh, and and wolfiness. Right. To, 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 I think to Bill, being, you know, being a werewolf has this incredible spiritual connotation primarily, mm -hmm. and then a bunch of other cool stuff you can do. With Ethan, it's, wouldn't it be really great to be part wolf? Because wolves are really cool. That's true. Well, yeah. He's a dog person. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, for him, it's, 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 it is. It's visceral. It's, it's, mm. it's like, oh, I can, I can run with my paws. And be, you know. Right. Um, and so uh, we took those bullet points and kind of condensed them down. It's okay. You know, and we, we threw like a couple of different meetings and a number of rounds of the draft before just deciding this is what is the core of Apocalypse to us. And from there, we started making decisions like, okay, which part time of the meta plot do we want to set the book in? Uh, because Vampire was very explicitly fuzzy. It was second edition in feel, but respectful of the revised meta plot. And so the idea was, Gihanna is certainly still a thing, and certainly still a thing that Vampire's afraid of, but it's not around the corner, like in revised. It's, it's something that's off in some undefined future. And getting a little bit back to that slightly more uh, uh, pretentious feel of Vampire Seconds. So we kind of had similar talks about Werewolf, but there was actual more evolution of the meta plot impacting the game. Uh, in Vampire, it was, okay, a couple of clans changed some things, we put a couple sidebars to reflect that, no big deal. And popped up, it's like, oh, hey, there's an entire tribe gone. Um, we kind of need to address things that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the canon characters evolved. Uh, 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 Ethan described it as, Lord Albrecht is more interesting than King Albrecht, as I got how he defined it, and I think that was a very valid point. Um, and so we kind of had to make the decision of we're going to make it a little more explicitly on the cusp of revised in terms of where it's set. Again, still kind of mentioning bits and tools of this is how you can certainly recapture the revised experience. Here's how you can you know push things even further to a different edition and, and making sure each of those editions gets flavor and, and feel into that. But we kind of had to make a more explicit choice this time around to say, okay, this is the line of sand. Yep. But even then, we... You know, it's also 2012, so we, we're kind of the light touch to a lot of things, and, and we're being very vague. But we're also with vampire, you can kind of squint and pretend it's okay. But with girl, we're explicitly muddying the waters that for some reason things just haven't moved past 1999 on, on some level, or the years don't really matter. It's really more accurate. You know, uh, things like homeland security, you know, uh, cell phones, and whatnot. Those are still a part of our are all part of our lives now. So they're part of apocalypse for the 20th anniversary edition, but the pieces that you remember are kind of stuck in that late second edition phase. I, you might have just walked all the way around that. I, I, don't, I don't, like, in different directions. Well, I mean, it's, it, and, but it's hard to kind of describe it. Right. Somebody says, well, I think, kind of trouble capturing it is because it's not an easy concept to describe. Um, it, it, and it's something that I know that Ethan and I talked privately about when Ethan took over full development of the book was kind of where we were going with that. Um, but, I mean, because it's... The apocalypse is looming. Right, I mean... It, we know, we, as, as, as werewolves, we know that the end times are coming. But 
we're not on that slippery slide all the way down till it's it's, it's actually going to happen. Right, and we but we're ready to. And we go, oh. But we want to, and, and we want to talk about things like you know, lull two thousand twelve binds think we're all going to die. You know, but I mean, you know, there's this kind of zeitgeist of this quote unquote mine apocalypse that you know it doesn't mean anything, but. Hey, a game about apocalypse in 2012. We should do something with that, you know. So Thank I mean, you Mayans. <laughs> uh, right, it, it's all the Mayans' fault. Really, the worm, the Mayan is the worm. Um, but finding a way to re- again respectful of this really awesome meta plot. A lot of people really enjoy that meta plot without tying it to a year. I think it's probably right. a better way to describe it. We have not tie it to a year. Um, it, so it's not 1999. It's just whenever that time was, you know, uh, the, the events of revised are just tools you can use in whatever year you set the game in. Uh, but since we're talking about now, we don't want to shove the game into 90s understanding of technology and society and culture. We want to understand modern culture. So it, it's, it's stripping off the years of that Metaplot timeline and still keeping it there in a slightly more abstracted way so you don't have to worry too much about this particular detail that's correspond with that particular detail. It, it's uh, like how you remember Apocalypse from 15 years ago rather than what it actually was explicitly spelled out. Well, and then again, that's the, the thing we learned with, with Vampire 20th, mm-hmm. right, is that no matter how much you can point to a page and say, yeah, the thing's right there, it's really what you remember and what, what got, both what got you excited, which is right. like the fun part about it, but also like how you're pl- you've been playing the game all these years. We actually have people come and go, that was never part of it. Yeah, really, dude. Uh, I, it's in V20 because it's in this book here. We know, no, no. And then we showed them, oh. Right. Well, I never noticed that. Well, of course not. You're playing. You're having a great time. and you know. It's- but certainly, um, one thing we learned from V20 also is that there was kind of a way that people were playing the game that, again, kind of, like, it's like Monopoly house rules. Everyone, you know, you find enough free change, you get money kind of thing. So it becomes a rule. And so we actually wanted to kind of enshrine a couple of those. And for Vampire, a good example of that was that vampires can have sex now because that's what you guys are doing with your game. So let's just <laughs> call it what it is. Um, and, and so we had Summer Cops as a werewolf. And a perfect example of this is uh, Jess Hartley, who was very passionate while writing on the book, pointed out that there was a right in the live-action version of Apocalypse uh, of a way of sharing Gnosis that doesn't appear in any of the tabletop books, but everyone has always assumed they were in the tabletop books because they're used to playing it in the live-action version. So we put it in the tabletop game because it was a and very useful, useful right. it's useful good, yeah. Right, it was a useful right. Everyone kind of remembers it being there, so we just put it in there. Uh, so again, it's that kind of, this is how I remember playing the game and how I'm actually playing the game, so let's kind of put that on the page a bit more and give you guys more tools to actually bring that experience more to life. Uh, so and was, as we kind of nailed that down, uh, we talked a little bit about art direction and, and how that slice inspired how you were going to bring the visuals to the book. Um, and, and you were pretty adamant about the comics early on. Right, right. I mean, so, you know, back back when we started working on, and I'll tell you, uh, Werewolf, the original Werewolf first edition, Apocalypse, was the first book that I completely art directed that was a major book. Um, so... Um, I was, you know, the core rule book. So I remember, uh, kind of go back in time and put on, <laughs> wear all the old clothes and try to think again, put my hair back on. Um, <laughs> and, and I was like, yeah, okay, that's what we were thinking about that. And, you know, we were, I don't know if you guys remember, we had a, a, a hex map in the back of that. So you could, and you could, so we thought this would be the one that would be really fun to play with miniatures. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and we made a few intros that way, but I mean that's not really what took place. But the comics were something that was that was that was really important even from the get go, and so, um, yeah. So we started divvying up what the things we thought were really important, what isn't important. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's something we didn't do. Um, well, I mean, visually. we 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 decided to make sure that all the tribes were represented, um, and we were just didn't really. Addressed by the Stargazers are there. It's, you know, they're oh, yeah. a part of it. That's more story crap. Um, we, oh, we did decide uh, for the um, the the, the Farah, um, the other were creatures, that we didn't want to really go too much into them because it was right. either we would have done a really skimpy, terrible treatment of them or have taken up way too much of the book. Right. I'm think, I'm, I'm, I was still on the topic we were on, which was... Uh, from we, our perspective? From the art perspective. Uh, trying um, to remember if there was anything that we said, you know what, I, 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 we, we, didn't, we, we, didn't do, we decided not to go that way. But mostly it was what is the really cool stuff that everybody loves about Apocalypse, and you know, let's, let's go with that. So, of course, the first thing we said was, well, I'm calling Ron Spencer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's got to happen. Got to have Ron. And, we want, and, and I actually never got Ron to do full-page werewolf stu- like, cool stuff for me. 
I always wanted him. And I think the one time it was open, he got like a 30 card magic thing he had to do. You know. Okay, right. I guess you're going to do that and go pay your mortgage. Okay. So, who does magic cards? <laughs> Losers. Uh, How so, many cards did you do today? How many did I sign today? Uh, so, uh, so we, we went with that. Um, I've always loved the idea that Bill and John Bridges are the same person. Bill and John are twins. Right. And at some point, they actually made the decision for one of them to become a writer or one to become an artist. Like they could have eat both of them, done both. Right, but they just made it uh, just, just don't split. Yeah, you know, and uh, which is, again, I think they were dividing the brain up, um, the stuff <laughs> they shared between them, and always wanted to get them on a project. We had them on this this, this project way back in the day that was going to be this really awesome graphic novel, and and, and various personal things got into it because it's such a huge project, and, and we never completed. So, uh, Bill and John doing the opening um, comic for for Werewolf. Uh, I did, I will tell you guys, I did reach out to Tony DiZerlisi mm -hmm. about that, uh, but Tony's actually a lesser god of uh, young adult publishing now, and, uh, and he could not come down from the firmament to, <laughs> to, to, to actually devote the amount of time to, to something like that. I mean, it's just, he's, he's on book tours and lectures, and I mean, it's amazing. It's beautiful work if you, you know, Spiderwick and, and everything that he's been doing. It's just amazing. Uh, but he gave it his full... God, I hope this is great for you guys. That sounds wonderful. I sure wish I could work on it, but you know, right. they're pulling me over to London for you know, I have to open up the Queen's bookstore or something. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Tony, you're great, and he's such a nice guy. So, um, but then, then this, this, the second choice, and obviously, the, the the way that we're really glad it worked out is that John and Bill could work together on uh, a comic that, yeah. that meant something to them for for Werewolf. So that's how we're going to start the book out. Um, and then, oh, oh, okay, so here's one of these. Rock Express has got to do the full pages. And then that brings up the inevitable question of, what about poor Steve Prescott? Yeah, yeah Prescott. Can you get yeah. those great full pages for us? And now he's out in the cold. I was like, well, wait a minute. Have you seen some of the stuff he's been doing for D&D? &D? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's get him to do the, the tribe uh, template. Yep, character. So that fell into place really nicely. And then it's just a question of reaching out to uh, a lot of the old artists, again, Guys who were in first and second and revised editions, kind of spreading it through that. But guys, we haven't worked with for you know 15 years in some cases. I rediscovered Drew Tucker, mm -hmm. uh, got him on on it. I mean, so I think I think you know there's going to be a lot of it's similar to what we did with Vampire Part 20th. People are going to feel really like, oh my, that I remember that guy's style. I remember he did that piece and stuff like that. And then of course, how much of the classic artwork classic artwork were, were we going to use as well? And the thing that we absolutely do, and you can tell anybody who knows who's been watching this thing go by, Flip Book of Doom, Josh Timberlake's yes. original pieces. It's going to be, again, a chapter in this book. Um, so, so, yeah, there's actually a story about that, too. Um, so, uh, so that's a great decision to make, but then how do, yeah. Right. And so Rich is like, oh, we need to do Flip Book of Doom. Like, great. And so I was like, kind of, yes, that's an awesome thing. Um, and at this point in time, uh, uh, it was after uh, so the last CCP, so a lot of the guys, you know, a very different scattered thing. I, I'm still at CCP, and uh, Ailey Miles, who's laying out the book, contacts me. She's like, "So I need the pictures of Flip Book of Doom," and I'm like, "Rich has got all the digital files." She's like, "No, no, no, the Flip Book of Doom was done in actual pen and paper, and there's a cabinet at the old warehouse that you go, go open." <laughs> And so I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just go over to the old warehouse. Well, it's locked up because we moved out of there and gone to a new office. So there's like a week where I'm trying to get into the place to get to the cabinet. And I get to the cabinet, and the cabinet, of course, in White Wolf glorious fashion, is completely unorganized. It's just a bunch of random stuff. So I'm like going, here's some old vampire stuff. Here's some pages from a vampire comic I've never seen before. Here's ads for Mage. You know, here's Racer Knight stuff. And I'm just like going through all of this, like going, where are that? And so I find like one piece of the flipbook of Doom. And I'm just like, oh, is this it? And so I, I go through other the drawers, all I find is one piece, and I'm still going, I have to email Rich and Ailey and say, I've only got one piece of, of, of the, the flip book. You fool, you failure! Right. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, okay, let's get the first edition book, and we'll you know, see if we can scan it from that. It's so I go to the library at the same warehouse, and there's no copy of first edition anywhere in the library. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I'm really nervous, because I'm like, holy crap, we can't do this, you know? Um, so I start going through random boxes in the warehouse, and I find a box that has, like, two copies of first edition in it. So I'm like, good, put one into the actual library. Here's one that you can scan and tear up. 
and I'm about to leave. I'm, I'm sweating because there's no air conditioning anymore in the place. I, I go back down. I was like, let me try one more time in the cabinet. And what I didn't know is the cabinets have these mm-hmm. canvas flaps in them. So I, I guess they're designed so you put the art in, they put the flap over top of it so they wouldn't get ruined. Okay. I pull the drawer out just on a lark. I see there's this like flap thing. I pull it up and they're all there, <laughs> mocking you. So three hours, I'm freaking out to find those pieces. <laughs> And it's like, oh, yeah, we're just going to the entire time. And he's like, they're like, oh, in or- sequential order even. And I'm just like, oh, my God. But you found the one that was missing in the other thing. So yeah. So that was perfect. And then, uh, but I also did find stuff like here's the, um, uh, uh, the original um, celluloids for the revised covers and some other random pieces that I just knew would be cool to put in there. So I actually grabbed a couple of smaller pieces and shoved those into the package saving as well and was like, you know, here's a couple of extra ones. And, oh, it was so – everyone was very pleased. And I was very happy it was done. But – that story now is kind of, I think, helped me realize how important some of this stuff is because if it wasn't for this 20th anniversary edition, those might have been lost. I mean, no, no one intentionally would have thought it. Just, you know, through everything that happened, they may have fallen through the cracks somewhere. So I'm glad that we had the chance to actually go through and recover those so that they can, you know, be seen again and enjoyed again. So that was, that was really, really cool. Yep. Yep, well, I think that's that, and that's part of that. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's kind of the on the art direction, art end of things, and then of course having Aileen, who I think laid out second and revised, or just revised, most of second, I think, and all of revised, right. and of course at the, the point, line, like that the, book, the line, yeah, every book in that line, yeah, and did most of the art direction during that period because she basically said, I want this. <laughs> Okay. And also, I'm marrying the werewolf developer. <laughs> and she told him. There we go. I don't think it's actually how it happens. Yeah, she told him they were in a supermarket. They were, they, well, she did tell him in a supermarket. I don't think she married him because he was the werewolf developer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because she likes things in neat packages. She's got, she's got the werewolf developer, and she's got werewolf. She's doing work. But all she has to do is turn to him and go, Why? we need to do it this way. And he'll go... Yeah, please don't hurt me. <laughs> so it, it, it's a nice relationship. <laughs> I am recording this, you know. They will hear this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I live closer to them. I'm going to get it. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, yeah, so I, uh, I mean, uh, I was actually going to, like I did with, with Vampire, I was going to lay it out and, and, uh, and as well as art direct it. And then had to start this whole new company. And <laughs> it was like, I, I love this. And, like, doing V20... Bizarre. Got me into the, the the idea that you know I wanted to start this company and and license White Wolf and stuff, and so it just re-energized me for, with with you know twenty twenty years of love, uh, baby, and uh, <laughs> and then to to say I was going to do Werewolf and Werewolf is actually I, I usually don't admit this but Werewolf is actually my favorite of the games, um, in, of the World of Darkness and. Um, I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna make it. It's gonna be so cool. It's so great. Because you can't tell one of your children you love it more than the other. Right. And next year, Major be your favorite. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Major has different favorite things for me. But anyway, and 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 let make the long, longer story a little bit longer. Uh, <laughs> I realized that I I was not gonna give it the the, the 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 love and attention that I felt in my heart, but didn't have the actual time to devote to it. Or I would then like. Other things would fall apart. So I'm like, uh, hey, Aileen, you're out of work. <laughs> <laughs> would you be interested? It's about time. <laughs> yeah. I guess you are. <laughs> okay. And so, you know, but I mean, obviously, it's, uh, if I can't do it, it absolutely should be Aileen's baby because right. she, she loves it so much. And then uh, on the, the writing side, kind of what happened was after we nailed down that outline and we all were really happy with it, um, Ethan turned it into an outline for freelancing writers. So you broke it down into chapters and, and put content into it. Um, and then we talked through that and, you know, I, I pushed a couple things down. Ethan pushed them back around and, you know, basically got what Ethan wanted. Yeah, to I mean, be. And again, like I think you're getting from the stuff I was talking about, like, so what chapter should we put this in? Right. Well, in revised it was here, but in oh yeah, second point. it was here, but at first it was there. But it, d- 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 yeah, but we and, and so that, like that actually becomes a major discussion. Like days go into this discussion on yeah. where should we put this? What was the? Uh, uh, I think it was like where should we put Kinfolk or something? I yeah, it actually was a Kinfolk chapter um, because like we wanted to make that a, a, a explicit chapter. And it's like where does that go? That was not really a chapter before. 
Um, and uh, that's something that actually, well, both of the anniversary editions was a lot of discussion of how do we organize this book in a way that makes sense, but doesn't, but evokes the organization of the previous books. You know, uh, um, and it's like Vampire had the book breakdowns of the second edition, and that was a very explicit choice. We actually changed a couple of minor things, mm -hmm. like the permutations as opposed to permutations, you know, just because I like the, my OCD kicked in, like, no, it has to be the in front of it. Everything else has got the. <laughs> um, but, you know, the same thing with Werewolf is like, and, the, and the, order, the structure of those three books were actually pretty different from each one, so we had to kind of synthesize them into one structure. Uh, and so that, that's actually why we have you know, those kinds of discussions. But you know, we, we kicked that around a few times, and then ultimately Ethan then went off and hired writers. And one of the first things that uh, Bill and I said is, well, actually, no, I said is I want to have some word count, because even though I have a this, I want to actually contribute to it. Uh, and then uh, Rich convinced uh, Strong Arms, uh, Bill Bridges, into working on the, the comic book scripts with, with John. And that's how that happened. Well, I wasn't. Bill requires convincing sometimes. He got to work with his brother. He loves his brother. I know, that's true. And it worked out well. And they didn't kill each other, so it's great. Um, so uh, then we got, uh, we started just uh, emailing each other, and uh, I, I'm sure I'm going to miss some people, but uh, it was uh, Phil Picado wrote for it, uh, Jess Hartley, Stu Wilson, Holden Shearer, me, uh, Neil Price, I believe, um, and uh, I, there were a couple other people. It was a pretty big team, actually. Because uh, Vampire Twentieth was me, Justin, Russell. That's it. <laughs> Three hundred thousand words, and so we went to like a team that was actually pretty large, and so it was a very different experience in that perspective. Uh, but it was great because, you know, we're oh, uh, Matt and Fromm is also on the team because uh, we're getting a lots of discussions about, you know, uh, Holden very passionate about the gifts and making sure the gifts made sense. So he dug into those and. Uh, we're all talking about other systems, and he comes back to us there going, I'm done. It's like, wait, what? All the gifts? Give me yeah. more stuff. Done. <laughs> writing, writing, writing. What's going on here? So I mean, we're talking about, like, you know, here's different concepts and how we're going to address these. And um, I know one of the things we talked about pretty early on, I think actually we looped during this conversation as well, was mm -hmm. um, the iconic tribe identity versus racial overtones. Right. Discussion. Uh, and... We, we, you know, it's like the Gaelic warrior is an iconic identity. The drunk Irishman is racist. And what is the line oh, between those? Oh, we can't be racist if it's true. <laughs> Speaking as a sober Irishman currently, <laughs> you're right. No. Um, <laughs> uh, but I mean, there, there's certainly, you know, there, there's a lot of cultural identity that comes with these tribes, and it has been treated with very mixed results in the, over the course of the 20 year history so it's like you know, how do we and, and what we have to deal with right isn't and so we're looking at it with, with our percep perceptions now we know what we would do if this was a brand new thing right, right. We, know, we know how we would handle these things but we're also making an anniversary edition like that's the key and there's expectations that the get are going to be a certain way that, right you know the, the, the um, those drunken Irish ones Fiana. The Fiana are going to be another way. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and if we all of a sudden say, dilute that, if we dilute that by saying, well, we don't want to be too specific about those things, we run the risk of they're not the tribes you fell in love with. Right. And that's really, to me, and this is the argument we were having, is it's more important for me to be a racist and put them in the way they used to be because that's what everybody fell in love with and that's what's going to be the, oh, yeah, right. um, than it is to be... Um, Writing something the way we, we would all feel more comfortable and 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 then the flip side of that is how can you ask me to write like a racist? <clears throat> when I hate racism uh, Right, which is which is kind of my stance on it. Yeah. Um uh, So but I mean so it's it was it, we never really came to an answer on that on that particular topic I think because Ethan did. I think Ethan actually came to the answer well I mean Ethan helped synthesize it, but I mean it was not like a I don't remember their specific You know this is direction we're going at this one Ethan saying I'll take care of it And then he went off in a box on the mountain somewhere and then <laughs> Words appeared. <laughs> Magic words in my computer. Right. So, I mean, it, it was less like we all agreed to this where Ethan's like, going, I got it. I was like, cool. And then that, that's honestly one of the reasons why I was really glad to have Ethan on that project because Ethan is really good about how do you keep it as cool as you remember it and love it and not do something you're, you're going to feel slimy and dirty when you write it down. Exactly. And, and uh, uh, Ethan's uh, really, cause he's kind of a, a quiet, personal guy, but he'll take stuff in and really listen and then just... <laughs> Put something out there. It's like yes, that's exactly it. You know, uh, he, he, it's all kind of internal to him, but but it does happen in a way that you you can't always articulate. But it just goes yes, Ethan, that's exactly right. 
So that was really great to kind of work with them on, on stuff like that. Um, so I think that's all the discussion stuff. So writing happened. Right. And then there's a... The, and then I got a paycheck. That's all I remember. He, and then, then, then Ethan did some more development, and then he sent the, the, the chapters out to uh, Genevieve, the same editor who worked on Vampire 20th. And if you have any love of indexes... and She's also doing other indexes. Ethan White Wolf can't do indexes. Check out Vampire 20th because it is gorgeous. Oh, really, seven pages. Really useful, really <laughs> helpful. Eight-point fonts. Uh, uh, tiny little font. But um, but uh, uh, she's doing she's doing the exact same thing for Werewolf, uh, and um, it's in layout. And we had you know we, we had the kind of the rough layout at this point. There's still some stuff I have to go back with Alien about on, on details. But uh, there's copies of it down at the drive through booth uh, for chapter two, uh, which is the tribes chapter. So you see the tribe spreads even though you got laid out a little wonky because um, it's in, Staples' fault. It's all Staples' fault. There will be spreads in the book, so nobody should look at that and go, wait a minute, they're not going to put spreads in anymore? Yeah, they're spreads. They just, they, 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 they numbered them wrong. Um, and then the next phase of this is, uh, while this is all going on, I'm c communicating with the printer and saying, we, we know we're going to do a PDF version. Right. We know we're going to do a print-on-demand version. We have all that set up. We want to do a deluxe version like V20. Well, there's no more... CCP store. Mm -hmm. No warehouse. There's no warehouse. We're not going to get this out in time for what we thought was going to be Grand Masquerade. Right. Unfortunately. Um, because of the, t the time frame that's going in with both the amount of work going in for the writing, uh, but also uh, Ron hasn't gotten me on fulls yet. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is just part of we want the absolute best thing, and quality takes time. So, you know, we, we, will, we will definitely be getting it. Uh, it is, you know, Many, many chapters are in layout right now, so right. It, is, it is definitely coming along. Um, but I'm talking to the printers then about how do we do this deluxe, and really the way to deliver that is, is via Kickstarter, because we've had success with it for two projects. It is a, it, we, we're kind of hammered out the, the annoying shipping issues and stuff like that with this book we're do, that just shipped last week. Um, this was our very new experience, and now we're with 20th, to take advantage of those, you know, learning experiences, and hopefully have a much smoother process from Kickstarter through shipping and everything else. Um, but I'm talking to the printers about how do we make the coolest looking World Twentieth, and uh, and I think I'm going to put the Kickstarter up at the end of next week or the beginning of the week after that. So uh, we're going to we're going to media blitz it on all of our various places so that people will know ahead of time that this thing is coming, and uh, and. Even give a 24 hour. In 24 hours, I will press this button and it will go live. Okay. For uh, because a lot of people, uh, I don't, I, have any of you guys done any of the Kickstarters mm -hmm. with us? Yeah. yeah. Get a little uptight when they just hear about it after you know they, they wake up in the morning and we had done it the night before and they go to I want to go and uh, have my picture in the book and all those rewards are already taken because they just heard about it because they didn't know it was coming. So we're gonna let everybody know it's coming. And 24 hour notice, and that way, if you're really excited about being one of the you know the high tier backers and can get all the kind of cool stuff, you, you should have you know warning enough to jump on there right immediately. I get that one. So, which is part of the fun of Kickstarter. Exactly. Is that part? Of, is that being a part of an event? Yep. So, am I going to questions? I want to go to lunch. But <laughs> you can go to lunch if you go to questions. But we, we can certainly go to questions. Yes. Uh, can you talk about some of the story elements where you said, yes, we'll bring this in, no to that? Like, are the stargazers, uh, have the stargazers followed the worm? Is the red star in the sky? The red star, they think, has been seen in the sky. Right. And the, star, the stargazers are, are one of the tribes. Right. And that's, and that's kind of what we talked about was that, that right, right on the cusp of revised. So basically, you know, all of the. Signs of the apocalypse that were introduced and revised. We're going to start. We're going to tease them, and, and you know, they're they're nodding references to them, but they're not explicitly happening. So, like, they, yeah, the, the stargazers are back. Um, we also, I mean, we have some of the lost tribes uh, detail as well. So we have like white howler details in there. We have some of the other uh, the bunyips and whatnot. Uh, they're actually in there as well because similarly, if you want to put your game further back than the the, the, the modern day quote unquote of the past twenty years, there are some tools to do that as well. And uh, I know in, in Vampire, I wrote the old bloodlines and clans in the past tense. So it's like, you know, he, you know, this is when they die, blah, blah. But here's the stats for them. 
do the math, figure out, you know, yes, we're to play those, without actually saying that they're in the modern nights. And I think you want to do the same thing with the Lost Tribes. Again, they're written in the past. As far as I know, yeah. Um, but, you know, so they're still gone in the, the, the 2012, but if you want to play the last White Howler, you can. And who does it? Seriously. Okay. Everyone's there must be Howler. four to 72 last White Howlers in the world. <laughs> I am Spartacus. Spartacus. <laughs> does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you decide if those all do really well? What book to make next? Is there some place where you get input after those? Before? Yeah. So I mean, drinking same, a lot usually yeah, helps. And the sort of the same way we decided to do them uh, with Werewolf Twentieth, which is kind of what makes sense after having talked to fans a, a lot over all these years, uh, and what uh, to a certain extent, you know, what there's sort of some some very uh, typical things that people would like to see come out. Some of it is, is pure nostalgia. Some of it is like, can you do another version of this just because there was once a version of it? Uh, which is fine, and I think that's a, a good reason to do it if, if you can just say something new, and it, and it does tie into it. Um, but a lot of it is, yeah, getting getting uh, both... Remember, like, a lot of our writers now w- played Werewolf and were fans. Right. So they know what they were really excited about when they were playing as well. So there's a, there's a really and, nice... And certainly, uh, Stu Wilson's the one who's developing... Uh, a lot of the, all of those, all those. Hundred books, uh, and he was a huge Apocalypse fan before he became a writer for us. And so he was saying things like, "This would be awesome. This would be great." Um, but again, it, it each thus far because we've only done this twice now. Um, so the first time with Vampire, again, it was just we're gonna do one book, and then it's like, "Well, we'll do a companion book. We'll call it the V Twenty Companion. It's it's, and we'll do a couple of things that'll be neat." And it just again became a huge thing. And at that point in time is when uh, you and Justin, but uh, me a little bit, also talked about what things have been missing in right. Masquerade. And so that was from all, during the V20 process, we heard a lot of things. And it's like, hey, well, you know, there's been a lot of talk about uh, um, you know, iconic characters and you know, what, what are the new characters and what are they doing? It's like, so doing the character book because everyone were like children of the Inquisition. So when Werewolf happened, I think it was a similar kind of idea. We, we went into this knowing a bit more there were going to be supplemental books. So we could also design Werewolf 20th with those books in mind. Like example, the Pharaoh. It's like, you know, we don't have to worry about putting the book now because we know there's going to be stuff beyond it. So let's go ahead and give them the treatment they deserve. Uh, but something that also was during the open development process and also just talking with us as the writers, like, you know, the worm, you know, there's a, there's a lot of worm support books. Book of the Worm, there was the, you know, the um, uh, Fumori book, there was the, the Monkey Rancher stuff. So let's go ahead and just do an updated version of that as well because it's another big piece of it that we just really can't get to full detail in, in the core book. Um, and then uh, Stu had a lot of bits and bits bobs he picked up from his own head and other writers in the community for uh, the Rage Across the World. Um, similarly, so I, so certainly uh, it's not explicit. You will come to us with ideas and we will <clears throat> bless your ideas. More just the ongoing conversation we have with fans of these products each year. Because definitely uh, what we learned really well with Vampire 20th was the moving it from the, the phase of we write the book we print a book, you then have a blessing to talk about it, and more, let's all discuss it, have a conversation during it, was really exciting and interesting. And so we wanted to replicate that with Werewolf because we found that having those conversations, even if we didn't necessarily agree with a particular stance or opinion or we didn't want to go in that direction, it made us think about the direction we were going in and helped us to crystallize what would be the best way to do with a particular book and to do supplemental books. So I, I expect... If this keeps going on into the next year or whatnot, it'll be a similar case where it's like going, what are werewolf fans talking about now? Right. What seems to be really exciting them? What seems to be missing? What seems to be really engaging people? And let's focus on products that help to tap into that engagement. Does that answer your question? Or? Mm-hmm. Yes, Art. <laughs> <laughs> um, what aspects changed the most due to player involvement and through that conversation with players that you weren't expecting or that really changed your minds? Do you think that... Uh, I actually wasn't really involved in the open development process, um, and my chapter kind of got a pass, so I, I don't know, per se. I know the artwork changed. The, uh, artwork, uh, the artwork definitely changed. Yep. Because uh, I know the, the, the tri pieces were kicked around a lot. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. I yeah. Mean, that was, I think that worked out really well. Um, this is... Be- you know Ethan's not here, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a predator. 
I said we're trying to pretend to be Ethan, but I'm not doing a very good job. Um, but no, I mean, it, it, I know that there were there were a couple of examples uh, where he and he was actually because that was like the first time he'd done that and and had the the open development where he was actually communicating and going, you know, I am going to change this around. I, I know, I, I swear there was something to do with the kinfolk. Well, I know he. That's such a that's such a pet thing. Well, actually, there, there was one piece I remember uh, actually because he emailed me about it. Is um, we were talking about uh, natures and demeanors because they're actually right. not in right. Werewolf. Uh, they're, 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 natures and demeanors were explicitly optional, I should say. Uh, whereas in Vampire, they're kind of core but not really optionally explicit. Uh, no, they're not optionally explicit. Um, and with Vampire, I made the specific thing to say I wanted to hear, I want to put them in front and center, and also I wanted to use the guide to the camp, guide to spot. Uh, nature's and years as well uh, and when we talked about it Ethan's like I think I'm going to go ahead and just put him in an appendix or not worry about it um, and then he emailed me uh, a couple of months ago and was like hey can you give me that list of nature's and years I think I'm going to go ahead and put him in because people seem really excited about him so I know that was one piece that did change from when we first talked about it to putting the book together because he's like go ahead and give me this stuff a bunch of this stuff with the um, with the uh, um, you know the power's called gifts, gifts. Thank you. Your well, favorite game. Uh, <laughs> third panel today already. That's true. Um, very little sleep. So the gifts, um, I don't remember how much of that got onto the actual blog open dev part because Holden did them so fast, right. but he actually ran the past a lot of people on, on different venues. And I know that he got a lot of feedback on that. And was right, it, he talked like, a lot even, of the forums about be, them. Yeah, even be, like on his Facebook page, yeah. like he did it and, and stuff like that. So Holden kind of did his own separate open dev thing. Um, yeah. But he was, it, it was interesting because it was kind of, he knew where that exact passion fan base was for that specific thing and kind of went right to them and said, guys, tell me what you think, which was an interesting tactic. I mean, uh, it's one of those I didn't, I mean, I haven't really done a full retrospective on whether it was better or worse, but it was an interesting kind of way of saying, here's a very passionate writer, he's very passionate about one thing and knows the people to talk to to get feedback on and that happens because he was on the reverse ends in Vampire because we talked a lot about the Maharaja and uh, him and Russell talked about the Salubri and so he was like, I know what it likes to be on the fan side so I want to make sure I'm going ahead and getting to those people ahead of time with the gifts so that we could do more of that. So uh, uh, there were pieces that happened but there's nothing radical at all during this second recall I'm saying no, oh we absolutely went wrong with that I think it was lots of details and nudging well, and I, I, no, no, I, will, I will because I was actually part of this because it was, it was coinciding with putting up the art of the tribes it was when he was putting up the tribe description and people getting in there and saying no this was what really was very important really helped hone that like the thing we were saying is how can we write something oh, okay. that's racist that's not but you know as flavorful and, and as evocative of the tribes as it should be, finding out what people actually <coughs> got turned on by with the tribes uh, did come out of the open dev process. We, I mean, there's a fair bit of that that, that we, ho we hoped we knew, but there's a lot of confirmation as well. And I, I don't know that we had a huge shift in any of the parents. No, uh, the clans kind of seemed a bit more radical, yeah. I thought. Yep. But again, we were we were still fumbling around whereas in this case we already had a little bit of experience with it and we actually went in with a plan as opposed to oh crap we have to write a book go right. which we, is what we, Empire we, was we went in with a plan and then we fumbled around right exactly <laughs> so does that hopefully answer some of your question maybe yeah okay any other questions yes. is there anything that you were surprised that people didn't want to be in the new edition like oh are we under a subway the train yeah. station is under yeah. okay the that's, a, that's awesome um no, honestly, uh, it was lots of, why is there more of X? I, mean, I didn't see a whole lot of, yeah, we're okay with that, not having that. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, nothing really jumps out at me. It's like, I mean, this, this was like, you know, we, we don't want that. Um, one thing I did notice was, and I noticed this also with the vampire process, is a nice self-awareness of the fan base that I was surprised by the vampire, but gratified by during Werewolf, uh, was that... I would love to have this. I know it's not going to happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Pharaoh, for instance. Yeah, yeah and, and when we have said, here's what we want to do with the Pharaoh, and here's why, it was a lot of, okay, I'm sad they're not in the book, but I'm glad that you have a plan. And that was what I really was glad to see. So that's why I didn't see a lot of that, because I think everybody else in the community also had a really good sense of, this is kind of what I expect to see in the book, and that's kind of what I'm seeing in the book, so cool. You know, uh, I didn't, I, 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 none of the process have ever seen a, you should take that out. It's always been, can we have more, 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 more? And, and certainly it's juggling and like, you know, well, can we try to push more of this in and, and you know, 
concisely address that point and whatnot. I mean, so that was a lot of the, the Tetris of putting the book together, but no, it wasn't really to take this out. Any other questions? Yes, sir. <laughs> what aspect changed the most in the um, setting from 92 to 2012? Was there the anything? Glass Walker write up changed a decent amount because it was just the ubiquitous of modern technology, or portal technology, I should say. Uh, and I know some of the gifts that Holden wrote related around those also were adjusted and modified to account for those things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think weirdly on McVampire where we had to actually take you know, things like uh, uh, Homeland Security being an issue and like, oh, there's a whole hunter government thing, so we had to address that. And vampires and the masquerade and social media, that's a whole big thing. There wasn't a lot of that with Werewolf because I think the Werewolf experience is much more timeless. And, and so something we actually talked about with Bill and Ethan was 20 years ago, we put this book out about there's this company and they did an oil spill and fuck those guys. And then now we're doing 20 years later and there's this company who did an oil, oil spill. spill. For real. Wait a minute. <laughs> and so it's like, hey, there's corporations that are evil and, and they're destroying starbies. our environment. No and Black War. Nothing changed, did it? <laughs> <laughs> and and for, certainly there was a couple times where I'm like, this is a little depressing when you think about it. That all the stuff we were radical about 20 years ago it's actually kind of got a little worse. And so it's like, this is actually a really good time to explore the these times topics. are here. So with Vampire, it was like, Vampire was timeless, but nudged to update. Werewolf really just slotted right in. So there really wasn't a whole lot, except for just some, some, some details and frills. Uh, it was a lot of, the world is the same place, the same things that we still care about, and the same things but we want to fight for. it's actually gotten crappier. Yeah. It, the it, the it, rainforest it, is this much more diminished. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, now it's, you know, when we say Pentex, you know, there's nodding references to, to different companies as opposed to the companies that were, you know, it, Enron now has had less of a reputation than BP, but the idea of the evil corporation is this horrible thing is, is still there. And, and, and the fact that corporations are now malicious it still feels like a very small step in our minds when we think about these things. I think Bill, I think Bill at least, I, I'm sure Ethan did as well, did, uh, I don't know if it, because uh, I haven't read all of it yet, I'm waiting to see the, the proof, um, talked about um, how a lot of wolf, uh, a lot of wolf packs, are, you know, have been repopulated. Oh, yeah. You know, so that's kind of a weird way that sh shifted around, um, but they have less room to do anything in. You know, so that's, that was kind of And it was also, um, I remember Ethan emailing me gleefully when they announced that uh, uh, they found that jackals actually had some wolf DNA in them. And he was just like, told you, I told all of you. <laughs> I was right. And he was just like, yes, Ethan, you were correct. Okay. You have Trump science. <laughs> <laughs> so again, but that, but that was the whole experience. was like going, the real world is just giving us stuff to validate Apocalypse as opposed to a vampire. We had to kind of nudge to real world. The real world kept going, nope, totally, your game is valid. Keep, don't, keep going. And it's just like, just stop, please. It's kind of scary. It's in the back. Was there um, anything story or... Uh, Mechanic-wise, you, you said there was a lot of change, but was there anything you just kind of dropped completely? Like, why do we even have this? No, because uh, we had this conversation in Vampire, which is why we didn't have it with Werewolf, because I knew what the answer was going to be. Rich was going to tell me not to do it. Um, but uh, the mechanics are very much a part of the experience. And uh, I know a couple times in uh, Vampire, uh, Justice was like, I'm just going to change this. And Rich was like, no. And then I got the book, and I was well, like, I'm going to change this. And Rich's like, no. I told you. I told Justin, no. Don't and, change it because it's part of the experience we had 20 years ago. Right. And so I, I tried to do it anyway uh, in small ways, and the community basically said no. And, and a perfect example of this is dice rolling. Um, the dice rolling probabilities for Classic World Darkness are, shall we say, wonky. Uh, we had a mathematician at one point at CCP. She could not adequately chart it in a way that made sense because it's so, a little weird the way that the botches work and whatnot. And actually, mechanically speaking, difficulty 10 is actually almost impossible to roll. I mean, you, you botch more often than you succeed. Uh, and so Justin and I were like, we actually had a couple of meetings talking about how we would update this. And Rich was like, I'm not sure. This is what the fans really want. And so we're because like, you know, okay. You've kind of figured out how to work your way around these these things, like in 20 years. Right. And, and, and so we were like, you know, okay, cool. That's Rich. We're, and then we He's a pity. went That's live with a different draft anyway. I didn't tell Rich. And, and you paid the price for your lack of vision. <laughs> what, what we heard actually was a lot of people saying, 
I actually really, that's part of my experience. That's part of my classic world artist experience is tripping over my own feet and exploding at random. Uh, the, and I was blown away. I had no clue that was really a thing. And, and people, especially saying, I like New World Darkness. I, I, the, the dice curve is really smooth and I really enjoy it. I cannot divorce my experience Classic World Darkness from the way the dice works, the way the dots look, the way that the other humanity is presented. That's a part of the experience for me, and that changes it if you get rid of this. So going into Werewolf, we knew, it's like, we know, okay, the, we're going to tweak and modify the rules. The analogy I give is you buy a classic car. This is great. And you, you buy a 1950s, 60s car. You, maybe you update the engine a little bit. Uh, maybe you change the tires. Because, you know, extra seat belts were a little safer. Maybe you, you, a little details. But you don't. You want to have a classic car. You buy a classic car to get that experience. You're not going to put a, a Bluetooth headset in there. You're not going to put a, um, a GPS screen in there because you want that classic experience. That's what we're doing. Uh, we could have put new mechanics in, put the GPS system in, put you know satellite. But you want that classic experience. So you you know we're gonna. Modify and adjust rules to make sense, and you know, just get rid of all those irritating things that always bothered you and everyone house ruled anyway. Um, and you know, synthesize and streamline a few things, but at the end of the day, it's going to be the apocalypse experience. It's not going to be the new world darkness experience that has an apocalypse for near. Okay. So there, this this time around is very explicit. This is how we're going in, and, and I ended up being the guy going to the writers, going, "No, guys, don't get rid of that stuff because this is what the fans want." Because I heard it from them. Right. Holden would rewrite modernize and, and basically n not change but just fix every single wrong th wrong thing he saw in the gifts if you let him right and so there was a, an ongoing discussion of how much do you fix before it's not that gift anymore right you know and, that's and there were a couple that uh there were you know a larger discussion with the team uh, with a couple of rounds by um but to hold his credit he did get that pretty quickly oh yeah um uh, it was one of those cases where, uh, and we, I, I used some of the, the vampire sections he and I had directly as an example, um, and he's like, okay, no, I get it, and, you know, putting aside how we'd fix this, but how can I make this gift an idealized version of that experience rather than a better power? Um, so we tried to add things where it made sense, you know, maybe we expand the scope of the gift, maybe we would um, uh, uh, change some of the context of, of the gift, like, you know, giving a larger penumbra, as it were. Um, but you should always be able to do the stuff that you could do before in the same thing. And, and it, it, it with stuff like uh, additional actions. Additional actions are really, really onerous when you're running a game, but additional actions in combat rounds are part of the classic world experience. So they, additional actions stay. That, that, that's just not a debatable point. We can tweak the rules a little bit to make sure that it's a little easier to run that on the story tower side and to, you know, ease things up here and there, but the idea of additional actions are... Sacrosanct. So stuff like that, those conditions we had. So again, it's lots of fiddling under the hood to make sure that the engine looked right and ran well, but it didn't change the car. Which is a difference between a, let's say, uh, World of the Apocalypse 4th edition right. and what we're doing, which is an anniversary edition. Yes, sir. There were a lot of to total spirits printed across a lot of your books. Are those being uh, brought together in the new edition or kind of a core set and then whatever you feel like making it. I believe they were synthesized because there's a lot of going through the other books and they have to pull all the stuff together. Um, I, I, I want to say Jess handled that. Um, I believe so. I, I can't say for certain, but I, I know that there are lots of details like that, like let's get all the gifts from the various places to put them in one place, get all the spirits to put them in one place. Uh, I, I, I don't see why Totem Spirits wouldn't have been part of that, um, but it, that was a lot of the point of a book like this was there were lots of bits and pieces that had scattered across books over time that people were always referring to, and so you would have, well, here's the five books, seven books for reason to play, try and get that all into one book as much as possible. Um, and, and so that's why it's a bigger book. It's not we're necessarily adding materials, we're consolidating all of the good bits of these other material and putting it in one place for easy use. So I expect things like that were put in there, but again, I haven't actually looked at the draft. Or there, still there were more totem spirits than there were tribes. Yes. I know that. Yes. But I don't know if they pulled everything together on it. I, 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 I suspect they pulled at least many of them together, if not all of them. Yeah. Because certainly I know uh, there was there are certain parts of the canon where it's just like, okay, there's like a gazillion of these. You know, we're, we're not writing all of these, just so you know. Um, and and uh, actually, we're all didn't run that problem nearly as much, though. Um, we actually ran things, well, it was a guy like Holden invented some 
gifts, for example, that just were parts of the canon that alluded to it, but there's actually nothing there. Right. And it's like, here's a logical gap that we need to fill. That was always fun to find out that, the, you, know, you know, there was something that we all thought was there and then it never really was. Right, it actually wasn't up. there. Like, oh, we should write that. Yeah, let's <laughs> fill that little. Again, like the, 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 the um, sharing of the cup uh, uh, right. It's like, giving, yeah, of course you can share Gnosis. What do you mean it's nowhere? Um, I ran into that actually when I did, uh, good example is I did the um, uh, chart, I did a chart for uh, Renown. Uh, because I was like, you know what, everybody else is really excited about this. I got to work on Vampire 20th, so I'll take the you know, boring chapters. And he's like, no, no, I'm not going to do that to you. I like, okay, cool. So here's a Renown chapter. I'm like, okay, Ethan, that's totally not a boring chapter. No. Um, not for him. It, it, it's not five pages of charts. Um, but what I did is, uh, uh, I, I remember from running Apocalypse that the default Renown chart is like, yeah, here's some vague ideas. Everyone went to the Renown chart that came with the Storyteller screen, it had the four pages, and so I'm like, you know, let's just put that chart in there, and I actually synthesized both of those charts together, as well as pulling a couple of other awards from other books that I remember them being in, and made one big comprehensive, this is how the Renown stuff all looks in one place, and this is how Renown works, because also the, the system changed a little bit during the course of Revised, unfortunately. There was the core system, and then it's like, well, here's this expanded system that doesn't quite work the same way, and then here's a couple of other things that don't quite work that way. So I consolidated the one simplified, not simplified, it's, it's a pretty detailed system, but one uh, cons consolidated renowned system. So stuff like that was happening all over the book, because that was, the, again, the point of the book. So I, I, I can't get the points, but that was what we were shooting for. Yes? So uh, I saw that Ethan Scanlon back when you the developer at least a couple of books down the road. Yeah, he's the only developer for this book. Uh, Stu Wilson's going to be developing the rest of the Apocalypse books. Is he uh, still going to be involved? Oh, absolutely. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really just a question. I mean, Ethan is, uh, he's actually way overworked right now trying to do this because he, he has a real a, a day job and it's a real hard one because it's in the computer game industry. So it's very much a labor of love and, uh, and I know he's, he's already talked to me about making sure that he can take a look at the not so much to keep an eye on Stu so much as to help him right. yeah. and I think it's a good point to kind of talk to what the role of the developer is because it's a little nebulous sometimes when you're outside of it and, and sometimes when you're inside of it um, when, when your boss tries to cram your responsibilities on you and say it's part of your developer duties uh, not that and? I'm thinking of anybody uh, but um a good example of this is, is that I'm not only one of the developers for this book, but I didn't actually work on a day to day working with the writers or, or with Rich's art director. Um, so there's a development team that usually forms when they're working on the book and usually sticks around or talk to each other during the game line. Uh, a good example of this is like uh, Justin and I still talk about B20 stuff, even though I'm not really, I, I write for him occasionally, but I'm not really involved in the day to day work of Masquerade anymore. But he's like, you know, just kind of a head check of, hey, where is your head with, with the book? where we are going with this, we make sure that the future books are consistent with that vision. Um, Ethan and Bill and I were the development team for this book. Ethan picked up the day-to-day -day duties to make sure the book got to press. And now with Stu picking up the rest of the books, Ethan's kind of gonna act as that role to Stu, uh, and Bill and I probably be looped in as you know people want our thoughts, but Stu's gonna be picking up the day-to-day -day duties of those following books. So it's certainly not like, you know, we, we drop this dude and insert this dude in. Uh, uh, because we're all very passionate about these games, there's still a lot of email ex exchanges and going on. Like, for example, I'm going to email Stu about Book of the Worm because I have some thoughts about it that I want to talk to him about. So we're all still involved, but it's not on a deadline, word count, contract basis, but still on a, hey, have you thought about this or this you know, cool. keeping this in mind basis? Yep. And Ethan, I know still, like I said, he's a very busy guy, but he still really loves Werewolf. I mean... Uh, he was the guy Amazing. in the office yeah. on the Warlocks MO kept saying, when are we going to put werewolves in the MO? You know, he, this was one of his and passions. Bill. <laughs> and Bill both, and still does. Yeah. Um, so I expect that he's going to keep popping up and, and, and talking to Stu, and Stu, of course, is going to ask Ethan for advice and suggestions. So it's definitely going to be a relationship there. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it, and, and come, he was like, we have to start um, <clears throat> changing breeds now. I can't, and I'm still working on the book. I can't. I just can't do that. So it's not like in the old days where the guys were working on five books because that was their do that was their full job. You know, if this is this is a, 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 a different situation. And, and Ethan's also writing the Skinner adventure. Right. Um, I hope he's. I, hope, I know he's got notes. Uh, <laughs> 
and he's trying to do to cover all the rest of the stuff that goes in developing and, and the, the tail end of developing. It helps again that he lives in the same house as the woman who's laying it out. But, <laughs> right. So uh, it is one o'clock, but uh, we had a couple more questions. Sure. Uh, it's over 500 pages. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh, no. No. The, the 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 books that are I think somebody has a schedule. Uh, uh, I don't think they're 80 pages. No. Actually, no. I have it. I have the presentation on my iPad. Again, my memory is uh, it's a little fuzzy right now. It's <laughs> <laughs> fine again. Right. I have that reason. Not on every book. Okay. Um, doing a comic is engages a lot of other things, and one of the things we, we and, and as much and we really we actually think that the comics were best in Werewolf. They were they were really fun, um, but they do tend to create they tend to dilute some of that experience that you get if you just read that entire thing as if it was fiction. Right? Okay. If you just if it was you were just reading words, you would be engaging on it in a different way than when you read comic. Yep. The uh, the uh, the tribe books in particular all have them on. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. So changing breeds is currently spec'd at 160 pages, uh, and Rage Across the World is 120 pages. So I mean, we're looking at slightly bigger books than the V20 Companion was. Right. Yes. Uh, Hangi Yoki uh, included, left out, or just mentioned? Sure. I, we don't know. <laughs> I, we're, we're not at that stage yet. So I mean. Uh, uh, Are they mentioned in the W20? So far in the, in the in the book. I don't believe so. Um, because uh, I, I, I don't I, I think there, I take it back I think there were uh, as a passing mention to them but watching the rest of the Pharaoh um, if I know Stu I expect they probably will be in there but I don't want to say yes they're in there and have Stu hit me later okay, um, but with 160 pages I yeah and he's starting blogging for the Change of Breeze book so right so jump, certainly go jump uh, on there and ask him directly and say right. be my okay. uh, certainly exactly Anything else? Uh, Given that it's late in the, uh, it's like toward the end of the, uh, toward the beginning of eyes, do we get a guest appearance by Samuel Haight? <laughs> <laughs> you get an entire adventure with Samuel Haight in it. Yes. That's what the Skinner is. Uh, and, and to be fair, uh, we, we talked to Ethan, it's like, hey, so we need an adventure to go with the uh, Werewolf 20th, and he's like, I know what it should be. Right, I know what it should be. And it's like Samuel Haight, and Rich and I were like, wait, really? <laughs> Did he ask Trey? And, and he's like, no, 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 it'll be cool. And I'm like, if anybody else was telling me this, Ethan, I would say no. But it's you, so let's see what happens. And to be fair, I think it's going to be really creepy and cool. Yeah, I mean, what he, what, what he wants to do is go back to the Sam hate that was so compelling and scary. Like, we, yeah, we first, pre-chaos web. When we, when we first brought him in. And, and it was really why all the other developers wanted to bring him into their books then, because, you know, we're going to do something with this guy. He's pretty cool. And then we made him not so cool. So, um, but yeah, so and he had, he, he was just like, and because I, Ethan is a really non exploitive kind of guy, like, he will do things because he, he thinks they're the right thing to do in their, in their, in, on, on a creative level. Right. So when Ethan tells you he wants to do a book about this relatively controversial character, you go, all right, I trust yeah, him. Yeah, and now I was, I was thinking, like anybody else? I don't know, no, but I think it'd be cool. Yes, sir. Two part. One is, uh, are, what are you looking at right now for materials for the prestige edition of W20? Is it going to be black? Is it going to... I'm not telling you. Okay. Uh, the other one... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he took that well. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll get to it. We've had, it. We've had these discussions. <laughs> um, and the other one is, uh, are you going to wait until after they are delivered before you make the PODs? Available and the PDFs available, or are you going to release uh, print on demand and PDFs like I know what you're saying at the end of Kickstarter rather than waiting a month, two months down the line? So, we want the deluxe experience to still be a really awesome experience, right? Right. Um, I think but, we will be a little more lenient on the time frame of, of the regular editions based on the fact that it's entirely possible that you know we, we will expand how long it's going to take for the deluxe to get to people's hands and try to be as accurate with that as right, possible. But I think we'll do with V20 work, you get the PDF before anybody else at least. Yeah, so yeah. so you, you, you back the deluxe edition, we've got a PDF, 
we're going to send it to you as a backer. You'll have that in your hands before anybody can buy it on drive through for a, a period of time. Now, whether that's a week, two, a month, but that, that will be available. Yeah. And I believe... So at least, so at least, so at least you'll have the material in your hands, hands if not the physical sure. book. So, so if the so. Kickstarter ends on, say, October 31st or whatever it happens to be, we'll have the PDF in our hands right away if those if we had the Kickstarters. But we still have to wait for the print-on-demand versions and... Uh, as as right, of, right in your hand is right away as we can, we can okay. do it, yeah. yeah. But yeah, this, uh, it sounds like there's a chance that the PODs will be available before you get your deluxe edition, but you will have exclusive look at the first... Yeah, first with the material. I wouldn't have a problem with that, or even just two months, two weeks later, than the public could have them. Because one thing, one of the three secrets we found with uh, B20 actually was that by doing that, when, when getting the early backers, the dish backers, their PDF first, is we had a lot of the mistakes we found in that PDF, and we were able to correct them for the print and demand version. So yes. it helps us too. <laughs> yep. All right. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you.